It's not often that I'm able to revisit a site because I usually travel to more remote locations and it takes a lot of resources to get there. This area of the Sierra Madre is different though. It has a special place in my heart. My visit in 2011 was really transformative because it was here that the idea for Project Katutubong Pilipino happened. Although I stayed in the Philippines already roughly seven years in 2011, visiting this area was unexpected and marvelous. The challenge to get here alone on a 16-hour boat ride from Aurora was an adventure. The remoteness of the location with its rich natural resources felt like a different world from other places in the Philippines I had been. It's a place not many people have traveled to. Everything was new to me. Makonakon is such a secluded part of the country and offered the authenticity I was looking for. I also found there a way of life that I started to fall in love with. The unspoiled beaches, rivers, and forests, the beautiful indigenous people, and the simple way of life that could touch any traveler's heart. And the Agda communities had a rawness and innocence about them. Life is simple in these communities, with people doing the typical day-to-day -day chores and tasks most people do. The men will spend the day hunting and gathering food, while the women generally stay back and watch the children. Although somewhat shy, the Agta are some of the friendliest and gracious people I have met in the Philippines. They welcomed me into their communities and shared what little they had with me. We laughed together, played together, ate together, and I even tried mama. The communities we met seemed happy with what they had, which by most people's standards is not much. The possessions they own are very little. A few pairs of clothes, a simple covering to keep them dry, and tools they need to get food. I didn't have many expectations on my return visit back with the Agda community. I was mostly interested to see familiar faces, reconnect, and see how the children have grown up. A part of me expected that life was probably going to be very similar to how it was during my first visit. Hi, <laughs> it was great to be back and just know that the Agta remembered me. Seeing the shyness on their faces, which eventually opened up with smiles while sharing old photos with them. We sat down and laughed, partially at not being able to completely understand each other.
I often forget how powerful photos can be as a conversation piece and help bridge divides. I felt reconnected with them. It was important for me to take time to reflect back on my previous visits. <laughs> the Agta community remained as welcoming and shy as I remember them. They embraced me again, even though my visit was short. I didn't have any expectations for this visit in terms of photographs I wanted to make. This is unusual for trips like this, but it was refreshing in a way as well. No expectations, just time to observe and see what comes. One of the biggest attributes with all the different indigenous groups in the Philippines is their strong connection to the land and nature. This is a theme I try to show with my images. It was meaningful to me being back in the water with the fishermen. There is such a strong tie between the Agta and their land, and this feeling came out while in the river with them. The Agta have depended on the forests and rivers of the Sierra Madre for thousands of years. Increased migration will put more pressure on the forest, even though it's protected. I fear for that and for the resources and land that the Agta need to survive physically, culturally, and spiritually. Life will drastically change for all of the communities living in this area. modernization will slowly start to wear away one of the last remote places in the Philippines. Perhaps development is not always ideal in all cases. It felt like time could have stood still for the six years I was gone. The same houses, same faces, same daily activities. And it gave me a deeper sense of how life is there.
I somehow felt a stronger connection to the people and the land. It felt like I never left. It was here on the Blos River where the idea to start documenting other indigenous groups in the country happened. In a way, I have come full circle, although the project still moves forward. There has been a lot of growth in my life since my last visit, particularly because of all the experiences and indigenous communities I have met over the course of the last six years. I have learned so much, and there is still so much to learn and discover.